Welcome back to this special weekend edition on markets, The Fear Factor, What the World Thinks. Earlier, I caught up with Didier Borovsky, the chief economist of Abundi Asset Management Company, a French fund which is one of the largest investors in India. I began by asking him if there is a real fear of recession in the global economy. There is a fear of recession, but what we do say is that uh, we have entered in a new world of sluggish growth. There is no global recession which is looming currently. And uh, we believe that, in fact, financial markets have overreacted uh, over the past two months. What we see, however, is that potential growth is slowing almost everywhere, that the global trade growth is under pressure, that potential growth in the major emerging markets is trending now lower than it used to be. So at the end of the day, we have to understand the fact that we have entered in a world of growth, of sluggish growth, that's not a recession, low inflation, where central banks will have to maintain very accommodative monetary policies in order to maintain very accommodative, in, in fact, financial conditions. But that's not a recession. And it's clearly a recession which has started to be priced in bond markets, and it's an overreaction. So, uh, would you say that we have uh, some more distance to go for the current uh, sell-off, or do you think the markets have adequately priced this uh, fear of slowdown? I think they have overreacted. Having said that, that's true that with the oil price fall, you know, emerging currencies went under pressure. And clearly, you have many corporates in Asia, in Latin America, which have increased their leverage in U.S. dollars over the past 10 years. And it's, it has become unsustainable at some point. And it means that the depreciation of these currencies versus the U.S. dollar has weakened, in fact, the position of these corporates. So to, to, to some extent, we understand that we may face some credit events this year that could trigger, you know, a kind of financial meltdown. It is exactly what is priced in at a global level. But what we do say is that it's not a systemic risk. Okay. It's something that is man manageable on a country-by-country -country basis. Fair point. Uh, the dollar index, uh, it resisted before it touched 100. And then we saw it go all the way, uh, you know, to 96 and change. Uh, do you think that that will be the bracket in which it will move? Or do you think you can expect substantial more depreciation of the U.S. dollar? So the, the U.S. dollar has uh, over-appreciated, I would say, over the past 18 months. On a trade-weighted basis, it has appreciated by 25%. Versus emerging currencies, on average, yes. it has appreciated by 40% since mid-2014. And we would say that the dollar is uh, somewhat overvalued. So we should expect some dollar depreciation on a trade-weighted basis in the coming months. Having said that, we've, you will see many differences between, uh, between, uh, between currencies. It would be rational to see a, a gradual reappreciation at some point in the coming months of emerging currencies versus the U.S. dollar, while uh, the uh, dollar should remain under pressure both versus the euro and versus the yen. And it would be clearly driven by monetary policies and, uh, and uh, versus, uh, uh, you know, uh, monetary policies in Japan and mon the monetary policy Fair. in the U.S. Okay. Uh, do you expect a fairly dramatic Chinese yuan depreciation? How would you uh, uh, see the yuan uh, or the renminbi actually at, uh, say, as of December 31st this year? Well, I would say that uh, the, the renminbi is overvalued currently. But what the Chinese authorities intend to do is to uh, engineer a smooth, you know, depreciation of their currency. We expect a 6 to 7 percent depreciation of the renminbi versus the U.S. dollar. And we, we, we believe that the Chinese authorities will want to, in fact, stabilize their trade-weighted uh, exchange rate. And, uh, and they have the means to do so. And the fact is that the overvaluation uh, of the renminbi, uh, they will deal with this overvaluation in a very uh, smooth and gradual manner. So you have to expect a gradual depreciation of the renminbi in 2016 and in 2017. That's not an outright currency war. Okay. How do you look at the Chinese slowdown? Do you see it uh, slowing down considerably from uh, the previous years around 7% growth? And what is the message for commodities? Uh, do they remain at this uh, trough uh, levels for all of 2016? Will the low commodity prices continue into 2017? So you have to, to understand that uh, the Chinese economy is in the middle of an overcapacity crisis. So the manufacturing sector is close to a recession, and we expect, in fact, this downward trend of the manufacturing sector to continue uh, in 2016 and 2017. It will take many years, in fact, to, uh, to deal with that problem. Having said that, 
what is interesting when you look at the Chinese economy is that the economy is split in two. On the one hand, you have the manufacturing sector, which, which is under pressure. On the other hand, you have services which, uh, which do well. And in fact, uh, GDP in services has accelerated, in fact, so far over the past two years. So that's, uh, that's something important. Concerning commodities, they, their prices will remain under pressure. But I would say that the fall has already occurred. And what we would expect, especially for oil prices, at some point oil prices have to rebound because the current level of oil prices isn't sustainable for all oil producers. But there is a currently excess supply and it will take time to drain the current oil glut that we see at the global, at the global level. So we should not expect a rapid rebound in commodity prices by the end of this year. Okay. Well, uh, now let me come to uh, where you see smart money going. What would be the pick of their, uh, uh, what would you advise would be uh, the, the, their top three investments, for instance? So we have kept and changed our exposure to uh, global equity markets. We have lowered our risk exposure, but in fact, we, we wanted to keep and change uh, our bets, which were at the end of 2015, to maintain an overexposure to European equity markets, to the Japanese equity markets, unaged, mm -hmm. and, uh, and to some extent to the Indian also equity market. What we believe is that currently financial markets have overreacted to what's going on at a global level. Sluggish growth does not mean recession. Mm -hmm. At a global level, bond yields will remain low for a long period of time. It means that at some point, investors will have to relocate their funds toward risky assets. Okay. And we expect that process to occur by the end of the year. What's your take on Indian economic growth? And therefore, what would you advise uh, an M&D investor asking you whether he should put money in Indian equity? So, you know, when we are talking about emerging markets, in fact, uh, we should no longer talk about emerging markets. They have decoupled. There is nothing in common between India and China, India and Russia, etc. Okay. And so my point that for foreign investors, for European investors, for American investors, it's very interesting to uh, make the difference between these economies. The Indian economy has continued to accelerate over the past two years, despite the Chinese economic slowdown. And my point is that given the, 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 the growth prospects, the uh, needs in terms of infrastructure spending in India, the catching up process which should continue in the coming decades in India, mm. we have kept, in fact, unchanged our views concerning the Indian economy. And uh, despite the fact that we wanted to lower our risk exposure in our portfolios to the other emerging markets. Okay. And looking ahead, we would expect investors to come back both on the uh, Indian equity market and also on uh, the bond, uh, the, uh, the Indian bond market, okay. which are clearly attractive. Well, uh, that's actually a positive spin on the global economy from Didier Borowski. And that's all we have on this special edition of The Fear Factor, What the World Thinks. Thank you for watching.